Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, we're talking all about the most scary thing for a window cleaner, and that is scratches on glass. So if you're a window cleaner thinking about getting into window cleaning, if you're new or a veteran, either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. Thank you for hanging out, and if it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully, the episode doesn't suck, and it's better than a cat video. There's lots of episodes for seven years of content. You'll be able to go back and follow anywhere podcasts are found, of course, and also on YouTube. But today, if there was such a thing as a horror story of window cleaning, it is scratches, and I happen to have the man himself Mr. Scratch himself, but you don't have a nickname. You should have a nickname, like something along those lines. You know, I I definitely don't. I just, it's, it's a cool kid, Cody, you know, right there. I've heard that one. Now that you say that, I've heard a lot of people, a lot of people say that. But anyway, we've known each other for like a million years, but like, if anybody doesn't know who you are, tell us who you are, what do you do, where are you from? Why do you look so familiar? Absolutely. Uh, First of all, thanks for having me on today. I'm super stoked to be here. Um, Cody Thomas, uh, I own a company called Glass Renew, and we'll put that aside for a little bit, but I've spent the last 18 years of uh, my career dealing with the worst day of every window cleaner's uh, life, which is when they get a call back and say, hey, we got scratches on this glass, what happened? And uh, so my whole life uh, really revolves around glass restoration. Um, I've been involved with uh, the boys over at WCR, uh, God, since 2009. I was just looking it up the other night. So, I mean, it's been a, been a minute. Uh, but no, but we, we are here as just kind of a resource for everyone. And uh, today I just really wanted to talk scratches and kind of help put some of the myths aside and put some of the fear aside and show you guys kind of, uh, you know, let you know a little bit more about what's going on. Yeah, you're an OG, man. We've we've been hanging out for like ever. Like, I mean, you were going to shows. I mean, we talked about this even before, but there was like epic shows in the past where there was like kegs involved and oh, yeah. uh, you know free beer. That was all everything that we do that uh, has been um, uh, on the risque side or the extra extra fun side has always involved you. Well, I gotta say, I mean, I I still use it. We've got yeah. this guy, and for those who are OGs, you'll remember that before that beautiful red uh, logo yeah. it used to be there. So, uh, uh, yeah, so no, I'll keep that on my desk. Uh, just, you know, when you need a beer, you, you never yeah. know. You, you never know. You never know. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, we, at shows, too, I just t- talked about uh, uh, shows, but the best thing I – and I've gone to – I mean, we've done probably 20 shows together, but – the best thing is when you guys are removing scratches. Like I could still to this day, every time there's a show, I just stand there and watch you do it. It's like phenomenal. If anybody doesn't know the glass you knew, I know we sell it and we're talking about it, but it's like a buffing system and it is absolute magic for scratches. And you've been doing it so long that when you do it, you're like, ah, yeah, this is that. And then all of a sudden it's gone. And you're like, what just happened? Well, how did that? And you're just like, yeah, I'm going to clean this glass like 50 more times this, you know, this weekend. And, it's, it's still shocking. Well, my, my favorite part is always when I'm done taking a scratch out of glass at a window cleaning show, and then I pull out a bottle of Windex, and I just, <laughs> I love watching everybody wince, you know? Uh, and it's, it's, it's just, I, I think, uh, I remember one year, uh, the folks over at Unger came by, and they handed me a mop and a squeegee. They're like, like please, please, please stop. Please. That, that's like your stick though because you did that even in the very beginning where you were doing it all and then you pulled that out and everybody or actually you used to originally i think you tried to squeegee and it was so bad that you were like i'm just going to clean it with windex because everybody like what are you doing and it would, <laughs> it would change everybody's mindset from the beginning so it was pretty great oh man that was back in the uh slayer days uh yes yeah, oh my the, gosh oh you know uh, so, You're not to do, we got we got to stop with the inside golf because there's so many new players. Uh, you know, got to. They do don't that. even know. They don't even Absolutely. know, man. The, the 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 history is phenomenally. Anyway, that that could go in its own thing, but but we are talking about scratches because you're the guy who you kind of developed a system for this. But before that, everything sucks so hard that a lot of times, especially in window cleaning, like 
we're the ones that always get blamed for scratches, right? I mean, sometimes it could be us, but it's so rare that it is us. We're just the ones that once clean glass is clean, the scratches sparkle, right? You can see the reflection. They look like it's there and they go, my windows have never been scratched before. You scratched them and then we're the ones that get blamed with it. So it is huge for us, but we also know it could be a $60,000, you know, lawsuit that comes out. And that's something that happens a lot. Absolutely. And, and I, today I really want to focus on kind of some real basic education on what causes scratches and, and how scratches work. Yeah. And, um, you know, to, to kind of set the stage, um, I'm going to give the really short version of the origin story for Glass Renew and how I got into this, um, because it really kind of sets the stone, the, sets the uh, tone, so to speak. So um, back in oh, uh, 2006, uh, my brother was a home builder, still is, he builds high rises now, but at the time he had an 18 home development in uh, San Luis Obispo, California, and stucco damage on every single piece of glass. And uh, it, it basically there were day laborers who went and dry scraped with putty knives to get the stucco off the glass. Yeah. So that was kind of the origin. Uh, my background was in engineering and stuff. My brother was lamenting what was going on, and I just couldn't reconcile the fact that there wasn't a, a method for removing it. And like you said, the other systems out there, I mean, Engineering 101, don't reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. I called every company out there that claimed they had one, and, and basically the rule was if you could feel it with your fingernail, it was too deep. You had to replace the glass. And that's just not realistic. I mean, every scratch is almost every scratch you're going to feel. And so it was in that crucible that we developed the process and, and we came up with a couple of uh, uh, technical jumps really in the, in the science of scratch removal. And the big difference was wet systems versus dry systems. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about scratches. Um, when you have a scratch on a piece of glass, whether it's tempered, it's annealed, it's laminated, it's mirrored, um, glass is glass. 73% silicon dioxide, okay, 23% trace minerals, and then whatever. Um, the reality is the scratch is, the best way to think of glass is like it's like an onion, okay? Yeah. Um, lots and lots of layers of non-ordered silicon dioxide. And when you get a surface damage, whether it's a hard water stain that has etched the glass, okay, or it's a scratch, that damage is in those outer layers of that onion, okay? So no different, you go to the store, you buy a red onion, it's all beat up, you peel off the outer crust, and you got delicious food underneath. Yeah. Same concept with glass. Um, but as we're removing it, what's really important to understand is unlike when you're dealing with like wood or metal or something that just reflects light off, right? Glass transmits and reflects light. Yeah. So it's all about keeping surface one and surface two of the individual pane, whether it's in an IG or it's a single pane piece of glass, keeping them parallel. And I think that was one of the big issues and one of the main concerns a lot of people had about glass restoration was, yeah, we can get the scratch out if I sand it or polish it or do whatever, but now I'm going to have a funhouse mirror effect. I'm going to have distortion. Yeah. It looks and worse than it did. Exactly. You know, you're not solving a problem. You're swapping a problem yeah. and so that was really kind of the core for us was figuring out how to correct that and a big part of that was getting liquid getting water out of the equation so that we could maintain an even grind yeah but when you guys are out window cleaning and you're working on glass it's important to understand that in order to scratch anything okay it could be a piece of wood or a piece of glass or a piece of metal or the concrete in order to scratch it, you need something that is as hard as the material or harder, right? right? So when you're looking through your tool kit and you're going through your truck and stuff like that, okay, obviously rubber is not, right? A brass channel is not hard enough to scratch the glass. You can rub brass into the glass, right? You can get a metallic rub on there. No different than if you lean a ladder up against the glass and you get those aluminum scratches that yeah. look like scratches. You can even feel them, but it's just the aluminum metal Transfer. rubbed on. Yeah. So really, it's looking at it and saying, okay, in your kit, the first thing I think everyone uh, 
needs to do is you need to do an audit of your tools, okay? Look in your toolkit and see what are the things that could potentially scratch. Now, in order to get harder than glass, rust, is iron oxide is harder than glass, okay? Yeah. This is why if you, it, you know, when I, I had a window cleaning business for about three years and, um, you know, I, because I, I, we work with window cleaners and God, you guys make it sound so easy and in many ways it is and whatnot, yeah, yeah. I was like, dude, I'm going to try this as well, you know, started up a side company. But um, like I'd always carry four rod steel wool, right? And all it takes is that first time you put the dry wool in your wet pocket and then you pull it back out and now, okay, you got to go get a new pad because yeah. that thing rusts like crazy and it will leave tiny little spider web scratches if it's rusted, right? right. But if you got a dry glass and a dry pad, you're good to go. Um, things like razor blades. We want, you know, I know there's a lot of concern about razor blades, especially on tempered glass with fines and ticks and, and all that. Um, but a rusty razor blade is a guarantee for a scratch. So, um, you know, definitely this is one of the benefits, I think, of, uh, you know, pure water cleaning and stuff like that. And I know you guys over at WCR have just done amazing stuff to really push that to the forefront, which is awesome because that helps eliminate scratches. But it's really whenever we're using a cleaning implement that's harder than glass. So a Scotch-Brite pad, a rusty piece of steel wool, a rusty razor blade, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And people are so scared because they don't quite understand. What's... And I'll tell you, the first, I bought the glass you knew, like the complete package, this is forever ago. I bought it as an insurance policy. Because yeah. we had not done restoration at that point, but I thought, well, I have insurance. If my insurance doesn't cover it, like I don't know if something's going to happen. Or worst case is I didn't even scratch it, but I get blamed on it. And now I got all this big problem. I have now a system where I can kind of save it. So in that same mindset is, is that the less you know about what happens is that's where you get this whole, oh, yeah, you can't use razors on glass. Well, right. the manufacturer says you can't. Well, they, they say that because they want to cover everything, every piece of the, you know, cover your butt type thing. But then it becomes something where there's confusion and the people go, well, you can't raise your glass. So how do I get this off? And it's like, we can raise your glass. You just have to know what you're doing. There's there's that weird education thing where it's like taxes. People don't do too much education <laughs> in taxes because it's kind of scary. So they kind of stay away from it. Yeah. Same thing with scratches and window cleaning. And I think, you know, and that's, that's where scratch how the word scratch became a four letter word in this industry, yeah. right? Um, but it's not just this industry. I mean, we work up and down the supply chain. Like I work with companies that manufacture glass. Yeah. And it's hilarious when I'll talk to them and I'll be like, hey, you know, what are you guys doing about the scratches? And, they, and they'll stone face with the thing, our glass doesn't scratch. And I'm like, wow, you know, you're on that Magic. one part of planet earth where physics doesn't apply. That's yeah. so cool. But I think it's, you know, there's a lot of concern out there. And, and as you said, whether from an insurance standpoint, um, I like to look at, at, at it more so from a standpoint as, as professional window cleaners, right? Um, we're charged or you guys are all charged with the maintenance of people's building envelopes, right? Yeah. Of their glass. And you're the guy. Right. It's, uh, you know, there used to be a guy who worked with us. A lot of you guys know him, Cole. And uh, my truck had an issue. I'd say, hey, Cole, I, you know, I need a, a new serpentine belt or whatever. And he'd, he'd holler out. Yeah, I got a guy. And he'd give me the, 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 the name. That's what you are. OK, yeah. to your customers, you're the guy. And so when you're looking at the entire spectrum of what it is to be a window cleaner, you guys are already doing restoration, whether it's post-construction cleanup and you're getting paint and silicon and stickers and film and all that off. Or if you're cleaning, uh, you know, fungus, mold, uh, you got bird crap, whatever it is, you know, I mean, spider webs, right? You guys are going to clean the window. If it's covered in spider webs, are you going to clean around the webs? No, you're going to take care of yeah, them, right? Yeah. So it's, it's really to look at it and say, First and foremost, as a window cleaner, as a professional window cleaner, you're already doing glass restoration. You're just doing it up to a certain point, and then you, you and that's where every business is going to be different. What yeah. do you want to take on versus what you don't want to take on? And it's really important to understand, though, like you said, 
there are a lot of times where a window cleaner, you're going to come out to a property for the first time. You're, someone's hired you to come out and clean the windows. And someone else may have scratched it when the window was installed or in post-construction cleanup, and they've just never seen it because they use newspaper and Windex, yeah. right? Yeah. Now you're coming in, you're going to effectively clean this. And like you said, the light hits it and stuff like that. So it's important to, you know, like I said, the first thing we want to do is audit our tool base to make sure we don't have anything that's going to accidentally scratch glass. But then it's also important when you're going to new customers' houses to for you to interview the customer. I mean, the customer's there interviewing you about, you know, your service, the value, the price. They're, they're sizing you up. Does your truck look good? Are you wearing a uniform? All that you need to be sizing up your customer as well. Have they ever had a professional window cleaner before? How are they cleaning their windows now? And as they, you have that conversation, you're listening for things that might uncover potential damage that you're going to uncover when you clean it. Yeah. And I think you know everyone in the service industry understands the concept that managing customer expectations, and that doesn't mean we want to you know, say, oh, we're not going to do a good job. We want to do a good job. We're going to do a good job and we want to set them up for that. But if there's an opportunity to see that, yeah, you know, these glass, this, these windows might be pretty scratched. Yeah. We want to address that up front, you know, because it's, it's, it's a lot easier to, to address that issue before you touch the glass than after and now they see it. Yeah. Just to take the surprise out of it. Yeah, you know, well, to take the surprise out of it, and I think you know the other thing too that that was kind of um, part and parcel with the industry for so long was uh, the, the the concept of a scratch debris waiver, right? Yeah. And th this was something when I first got involved with the window cleaning industry back in the early two thousands. Um, it was kind of the standard operating procedure, and in a lot of ways, it still is for a lot of companies. But it always rubbed me the wrong way. It's like, okay, I'm going to start out a professional relationship with a client, um, asking them to sign away liability or the ability to hold me accountable if I destroy their their building, yeah. right? Or to you scratch the glass. And but but at the same time, you know, that's a huge liability. How are you going to walk in and clean a window and then get blamed for something someone did five years ago, right? right. So there's got to be a balance there. And I think that's where education really can come in, not just in terms of educating yourself as a professional window cleaner on what are the different issues that could arise and how to deal with them, but also in educating your customers yeah. and letting them know that, guess what? There are 7 billion square meters of glass installed on buildings right now today around the globe. And one irrefutable fact about every piece of that glass is that at some point in its life cycle, it's going to get scratched. OK, no. and it could be from the hammer that's smashing it to a razor blade to a dog that is trying to get outside and go to the bathroom. Yeah. So um, it's really, you know, letting your customer understand what it is, but then also educating them and saying, hey, if this does happen, there are ways we can fix it without having to replace it. And it's going to save you money. It's going to save time, all that kind of stuff. And that then means that you're coming to them, not just trying to get out of a problem, but you're bringing a solution. Yeah. And that is the true mark of a professional. Yeah. And that's, again, the, the kind of thing about taxes, you know, everybody's scared of taxes before you have an accountant, they wait till the last second to file because they just like want to postpone the problem. So with scratches, People just, I mean, they'll learn everything else and then they won't learn that side, which by the way, we'll get into in a second, but there hasn't really been a definite specific way to learn about it either other than just talking to people. And there's so much misinformation that, like I said, the whole, you can't put a razor on tempered glass thing I, that you, I hear that multiple times a day and yep. it's like, you know, it's gotten out there, but yet there's no kind of resource for that. But if you don't really know or you're not confident, you're scared. So by being scared, you just don't talk about it because it's, eh, you know, it's, but we're the ones that we hire. Even if we're new, we have that kind of imposter syndrome because we're not the professional, but we are. People are paying us a lot of money to be the professional. We need to know how to clean windows. We need to know how to maintain them. We need to know how to fix them if it happens. We need to know all of that. That's literally what we're being hired for is the professional. And the professional knows everything. It's like calling an HVAC guy. 
you know, or, you know, your car doesn't turn on and you bring it in and they go, huh? And you're like, what do you mean? And you're like, I don't know what it is. Well, see, and that's what I do now. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. And I mean, and I think that's been honestly, you know, like I said, I've been working with the guys over with Chris and Alex and with you and the folks at WCR. And that's been one of the most valuable things that I've seen that you guys have provided for the industry, first with the forum and then with the shows and all the different the stuff is really the support. I mean, any professional window cleaner out there right now can pick up the phone, call the guys at WCR, whether they need material or they need advice on how to fix something or how to address some kind of issue, you're going to get the answer. And education is really important. And I mean, I do work with the uh, IWCA, uh, which is kind of a legacy organization that's been around, um, you know, and I work on the Glass Education Committee. I definitely um, will put out, uh, you know, I do classes and stuff like that. But, um, you know, one of the reasons why I, I really wanted to come on the podcast today was to share with the audience and share with you and the WCR community and the, the Window Cleaner Live community um, some new education materials that, that we're putting together. And um, we're, we're actually looking at it from a standpoint of saying, okay, like you said, it used to be that it, you had to know who to talk to or you had to go out and really hunt and peck and try to find how do I use a razor properly? What do I do if I've got a scratch? How do I get out of this? You know, what are the different ways of dealing with different surface damage? And so we've put together kind of a, a handbook and it's in its final, you know, we're getting, getting ready to working on the glossary and the index right yeah. now, but it's a textbook on everything that is, um, you know, everything that could happen to a piece of glass from a damage standpoint. And I don't want to give away any information if I'm not supposed to, but we were talking and it's like 165 pages. Like, it, can you believe that there's enough stuff to fill 165 pages? I mean, it's it's, great. well, it's like you think of one thing, like, does it raise or scratch glass? No. And that's all the information. But there's, I mean, there's so many pieces to it. Well, and it's, it's, there, there's so many pieces to it, but then there's also so many things that we want to address in it. And really and truly, it was kind of trying to write a textbook that yeah. you could use, but it was accessible for a field environment, right? Specific you know, I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. I can nerd out on glass and sit down and start riddling off the chemistry and all that kind of stuff. And that's fun. And anyone who's a glass nerd, and if you want to do that, dude, pick up the phone, give me a call. I'll bend your ear for an hour and a half. Uh, <laughs> true, because I'm true. that kind of nerd, right? Yeah, yeah. But when we're looking at it from the standpoint of, okay, practical real world, and um, kind of as a, a, as a primer and kind of as a teaser, kind of as an opportunity, we actually we put together a um, brief guide for window cleaners that – are associated with WCR, right? So if you call WCR or whatever, this is for you. It's a 26 page condensed one. And we talk about, you know, really three common ones, hard water stains, you know, scrubby pads. Someone used the scotch Bright pad when they were trying to get the hard water stains off their windows. And now yeah. they're like, oh, I don't know where those scratches Oops. came from. You my, must my, my, my steel wool wasn't rusted. It just had a little brown on it. That's right. It's, it's not rust. It's seasoned. It's a patina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we also threw in some razor blade scratches. But then in this document, we also put kind of, you know, the, the brief history of glass polishing. Dude, as long as glass has been made and manufactured, people have been grinding it and polishing it. And so, you know, there's a whole wealth of history and knowledge out there where yeah. you can see all of the landmines everyone stepped on to get to where we are today. And yeah. we tried to put that together. And then we also talk about the economics of it, too, because, I mean, that's the other question everyone always has is it's like, you know, as you said, a lot of people will, will, will put these tools in their quiver, you know, as kind of an insurance policy, which is great. Other people are going to go out and try to, you know, hey, I want to make money fixing other people's mistakes or other oh, yeah. people's issues. But then it comes down to how do we how do we price that? Right. And what, what is the true financial impact? And so we put all this stuff in there. And really, we want to give it away to everyone because I don't want my goal in my career as I continue to go on. I mean, I, as I said, I've been doing this about 18 years now. Um, I don't want anyone losing one night's sleep over scratched glass. I don't want people 
concern that it's going to they're going to lose their business or yeah. their insurance is going to drop them. These are as business owners, we already all have to deal with all the these are the sexy parts of being a business owner, right? Yeah. All of the uncertainty and all of that. This is an opportunity to educate yourself so that you can take that fear away and address it and, and turn a negative into a positive. Really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, uh, you kind of touched on that, but the types of scratches, like run through real quick types of scratches, because I think this is the most interesting thing where people just think it got scratched. There's like an answer. But there's like so many ways because, I mean, hard water, even if it doesn't pit, you can take hard water off the same way. But like that's one side. You get into acid etching. You get into, you know, uh, swirling type things to totally. deep scratches. To So so looking at it, um, and this is one of the things that we did in the, uh, in the handbook, okay, is all damage on glass comes from one of two sources. It's either mechanical or chemical, okay? Yeah. Chemical is going to be things like, hard water stains, uh, acid burns, um, you know, leaching from the building, any kind of chemical interaction between the environment and the glass, okay? Right. And those range from very light to extremely horrible damage, depending on what it is. Yeah. Then you got mechanical damage, okay? That's when two things touch, the, you got the glass, something, it touches it, and it puts a scratch in. And that's gonna go from everything from suction cup marks, right? when they're installing these glass panels into buildings and they use those suction cups, it leaves little bits of rubber on the surface that's pressed in there. How many times have you cleaned a new building and as soon as the window dries, you're seeing those suction cup marks yeah. left on there and you're like, dude, what the hell? Yeah. As soon as you get like fogging or anything, you're like, yeah, the you're like cup come marks, on, yeah. man, you know, you're killing me, Smalls. Yeah. Um, to like fines and ticks, right? You know, a lot of people, there was a phrase called, uh, 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 fabrication debris, which is what we used to call the fines and ticks on the surface of tempered glass. And, and uh, it's really interesting as a quick short aside, um, the, at the University of Pennsylvania, we did a uh, research study um, where they took the, they, they monitored the glass, the ribbon of glass as they were making it, as it was going through the tempering oven. And what we always thought was fabrication debris was little bits of crap that was on the roller side of the, the, the oven that would heat fuse to the glass during the tempering process. Yeah. What we've actually found out is that's not the case. Um, the case is that if you don't run the bright shielding gas, if you don't have your temperatures dialed in correct for the humidity and everything that's going on, as glass gets tempered, microscopic stalactites and stalagmites grow out. Little crystals mm -hmm. will grow during the tempering process. Okay, and then that's what catches your razor when you're going over it and giving you that gritty feel, right? Yeah. And, and that right there, when you were talking about in the beginning, something has to be harder. Now it's a diamond cutting a diamond. Like that's how you cut a diamond. Once the blade holds the glass on the glass, it's glass on glass, and exactly. Not the problem. And so you know everything from that. Then you got cleaning uh, braces. You got like I said. If you guys are using aluminum ladders, I promise you that at some point on one of these properties, your guy's ladder has rubbed against a piece of glass and it's left that metallic line that's yeah. going to be there. And sometimes a little elbow grease and a buffing compound can get that out, but sometimes you've got to go to a more, you know, substantial right. polishing method. But then you got razor blade, masonry, uh, you've got graffiti, you've got deep scratches, you've got metal grinding. Someone sets up, I, we did a job up the street. A guy was putting a pool in his backyard and they were, they, they set up the chop saw to cut the uh, rebar yeah. right in front of the sliding glass door. And yeah. so all day they're chopping it and hot metal spikes are just melting into the glass in the frame. Um, that know, was welding. actually my first glass, by the way, that I had was I had a builder and this was his own house. And they were cutting the brick to do the patio okay. and the doors were just, and it were all rusted because it was pieces of the blade that were now like, you know, into the glass. And he ended up replacing it before I could do any type of fix. But that was the reason that I got into that is just because of that exact issue. And, and so it's, it's really, I mean, the, the spectrum is huge, right? Yeah. And it, then it's just understanding what are the effects on the glass, right? And, um, you know, we go through that a little bit in the, in the, the guide and, and this guide, I guess we're going to put a link to it in the description at some point, uh, yep. here. So you guys can definitely check it out. You can get it from WCR, but 
we talk about what is the difference between tempered glass and yield glass and heat strengthened glass, right? Yeah. And how do we uh, work with those different types of, of glass and what are the effects, right? You know, if I'm grinding on a piece of glass, am I weakening it or am I strengthening it? And, you know, what is, what is the effect? And so we go through all of that and really try to make it accessible and give you kind of a jumping off point, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, and it's all in one spot, which I thought was, this we started talking about a couple of weeks back and just looking at it was like, whoa, like we're, we're, you use the word nerds. That's what I always say is like, we're nerds in the industry and we want to learn everything. And this is one thing that there's like no kind of sole thing. So that really, really kind of helps. And there's no, I mean, there's so much knowledge out there when it comes to all the different pieces, but not put together enough where people will just, no pun intended, scratch the surface of what they need to know, but not really know. Like you said, the differences in glasses or the question that you get and asked every time somebody watches you polish is like, does that make the glass thin? Like, are you going to eventually just wear right through the glass? And like all those little things where, you know, it's kind of layers or you know that it's a surface or, you know, it's a and you can watch. A, a, a piece of concrete putting a gouge in glass where it almost hits you, you know, it's breaking in the, in the piece. It's like, Oh my gosh, it like hurts my ears hearing you do that. And you're like, yeah, here, here, pull it out. You know, where people before you see like ring marks in a mall and you go, Oh, those are so bad. There's nothing we can do for that. And it's like, yeah. you just didn't know. You didn't right. know that, you know, we had an option. You didn't know why it was there. You didn't know what caused it. And there comes the fear without knowledge is fear. Well, and I think the other thing, too, is there's been this mentality amongst people who can remove scratches effectively and efficiently that they don't. It's kind of like once they figure it out, they're like, oh, my God, this is the greatest secret. And I, I'm going to keep this and I'm going to go sell this service. And I'm going to make lots of money. Yeah. But I don't want anyone knowing what it is. And so it's like I'll be on Facebook groups. I'll be in Instagram things. I'll see stuff. And people will put up, yeah, dude, look, here's my before and after. What happens? Everybody comes out, 20 people. How'd you do that? What tool did you use? Where did it go? And what do they say? Oh, uh, if you have any jobs, give me a call. I'll come yeah, out, yeah. right? And I get it, right? Like, I get it. This is something that is a huge opportunity from a financial standpoint. Yeah. And the revenues from this will greatly eclipse you know, your normal standard two story window cleaning job. Right. Yeah. But, but the reality is, is the more that the more people understand that this is something that can be fixed, the more opportunity there is and the more people are looking for it. And I, I love the phrase, the rising tide lifts all ships, you know? And so it, with the education and in there, and when you do see the people on, on Facebook or on, you know, whatever, Twitter or, you know, Instagram, and they're posting this stuff up. If they're not answering the questions, call the boys at WCR because they've got the answers. And, yeah. uh, you know, and that's really what, what I would encourage everyone because, yeah, you know what? I'm not the guy. I didn't invent scratch removal in a general sense, right? People have been trying to do scratch removal. I came up with a better mousetrap. I came up with a way that works every time, first time. Um, but it's not necessarily to say that, you know, I'm the father of this. It's more like, Hey, this was something that was super hard and super scary for a lot of people. We figured out a way to make it easier and more accessible. Here you go. Yeah. And I think that's always been kind of Chris and Alex and your, you know, uh, the whole WCR mentality. Um, you know, it was, it was funny when, when I first started working with window cleaners, there was like the old school and the new school yeah, yeah and the old the old school you could define like they were insulted that a product like windex existed yeah like it was just like like who do you think you are dude you got to be a professional right yeah and i'll never forget chris was like no dude cleaning windows is easy you just have to understand what you're doing and if you follow this step you're gonna make money and like yeah. if you don't know what you're doing call me and i'll tell you how to do it because it's easy and that's not to say window cleaning doesn't have its challenges, okay? I, I'm yeah. not going to say that at all. But um, it really is, you know, once you understand how to work with glass and understand how glass is manufactured, it, it, you can drill it. You can cut it with a circular saw. You can bend it. You can build it's load resilient. bearing. I mean, yeah, yeah it's, it's, we're trained from a young age to think of glass as your grandmother's bone china, right? Yeah. Two hands. Don't drop it. You don't run around glass. We don't play next to glass. You don't want to bump into it. 
you're going to get cut, you're going to die, right? Yeah. The reality is, is glass since 1954 has been more akin to plywood than your grandmother's bone china, as long as you understand the rules. And mm -hmm. once you understand the rules, dude, you can do anything you want with the glass. I want to ask, I'm going to put you on the spot, but I'm going to yeah. ask you, is there such a thing as damage on glass that cannot be fixed? I mean, other than it being broken in a pile of shards. Okay, so once it's cracked, obviously that's a that's a failure. Okay, yeah. the other types of damage that th let me put it this way: there are types of damage that shouldn't be attempted, um, and then there are types of damage that uh, are not cost effective to remove. Okay, right. but. Theoretically, the one issue we want to deal with or we want to avoid is when you have a piece of tempered glass, the best way to think of a tempered piece of glass is very much like case hardened steel. And if you're not familiar with that, think of a fig Newton. Okay. Everybody knows a fig Newton. Yeah. Uh, you got the crust bread around the gooey figgy center. Okay. That is what tempered glass is. You have a tempering envelope. Okay. A hard shell around a soft piece of annealed glass in the middle. And what the tempering process does is it puts the glass into a compressive tension, all right? And basically what that means is the glass is squeezing really tight. It's like flexing a muscle, okay? Yeah. So what does that do? It makes it harder and it makes it more resilient. It also means when it breaks, it's gonna break into a million tiny little pieces because instead of exploding, it kind of implodes on itself. And that makes it safer for, for all that. Yeah. When we have damage that penetrates through the tempering envelope, okay, in so it goes through the crust into the bread or into the gooey middle, those potentially could become issues. And the hard part on it is it's very hard to measure the tempering envelope. You have to use very, very specific tools that are incredibly expensive and not something that the average window cleaner is going to do. But it's more of an issue of if you're dealing with welding slag damage that has burned more than halfway through the glass, don't do that. Yeah. If you're working with um, someone, you know, but from a deep scratch standpoint, if I take a carbide scribe and I just gouge into the glass, as long as I don't break the glass doing it, I haven't gone through the tempering envelope because as soon as that carbide scribe penetrates the, car, uh, the envelope, the glass will explode. OK, mm -hmm. so that's the way you can look at it now with welding slag because it's hot and it's and sometimes with grinder burn, the hot metal shards will melt into the glass. Right. And that can bypass the uh, the, the envelope, the tempering envelope. So the short answer is very few things can't be repaired. OK, now. If we're looking at a house and let's say that it's a one foot by two foot you know, fixed picture window, cheap IG unit from Home Depot type kind of thing, $175 window from, from Depot. Um, and it's got just crazy scratches on it. That's going to be a situation where it's probably cheaper to replace it than what I would want to charge if I'm going to spend two hours or three hours working on this piece of glass. My billable rate is way more than what that's going to cost. Yeah. So. It's, you know, they're, they're, it's a give and take, but generally speaking, what we target when we're going out is we're looking that we want to be charging around 30% the cost of replacement, okay? And so if, if you're looking at a big window or a big door, that's going to make sense. When you're yeah. looking at small individual French panes that are three by three and, you know, easy to pop in and out, do your customer the favor and, and just help them find a glass shop that's reputable that will come in and swap them out. Yeah. Nice. Well, it's a whole thing. I mean, you know, we've talked, uh, we've probably spent hours and hours and hours talking at, you know, uh, bars after the shows are over and just getting into the wee hours about this stuff too. So it's, there's really a lot to it. And when you really understand it again with knowledge reduces fear. So when people are scared of scratches or they're scared to scratch or they're, they just don't understand. So understanding where they come from, how can they be fixed? What are they actually doing? It's really going to help. So again, I mean, I think that 
as far as knowledge goes, the, the, I guess, manual, I don't know if there's even a name for what you're making yet comes out. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be a heck of a resource, I think. So, well, I appreciate it. And yeah, we're doing it under the name Glass Re University. And uh, it's going to be the handbook, uh, Glass Restoration Handbook. Um, we're hoping to have it out here in the next uh, couple of months. Uh, like I said, we've gone through final editing. We're just wrapping up glossary and index and all that. Um, so that will definitely be there. This quick guide is going to be available today. Uh, while you're watching this, you can get that. So it's a good start off point yeah. um, and to get things going. One last thing I, 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 I want to say and, and touch on on this, because they, the other issue that a lot of people have or concern that a lot of people have is um, they'll be doing post-construction cleanup, right? So we're dealing with new windows yeah. and the idea, okay, I'm going to be grinding on this glass uh, to remove damage. Am I voiding a warranty? What am I doing? Like, how is this going to affect the longevity? And I just want to put everybody who's watching their, their fears at rest. Um, pretty much every major glass manufacturer in the world currently uses our tools in their QA department. Okay. Yeah. And so, I mean, we work, we're approved by Boeing. We work on commercial planes. We work on private aircraft. We Back in the day when the shuttle was still going, we actually even worked on one of the shuttles. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, they're, 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 we're not damaging the glass. We're strengthening the glass by removing stress points. This is an easy to understand. Now, that's the X question. And I know that someone's watching right now and they're screaming at the thing. Yeah, but what about the learning curve? Yeah. Okay. Um, let me ask this. Josh, when you started your window cleaning uh, business, how many how many windows did you have to fan before you weren't leaving any streaks or uh, any any marks on the on the glass? Yeah, uh, hundreds, hundreds, and hundreds of windows. Okay, yeah. so it's not going to take you hundreds and hundreds of windows, but with the tools, my big thing, and I'm a firm believer um, from an education standpoint, that if you can understand the concepts behind what it is you're doing, and you understand what the tools are doing then the rest is just figuring out how to get your muscles to do it and right. muscle memory. I like to tell people that I can teach this skill in three to five hours and you can spend the rest of your life perfecting it. But yes. um, it really is not, you know, I, yes, like you said, you're going to come to the show, you'll see us at a show and we'll put a scratch in, take it out, put a scratch in, take it out every five minutes. And you're going to look at it and go, God, that's so easy. And it is. If you're once you get to that holding point. a machine, right? You know, yeah. but like I promise you, just like you said, you hand me a squeegee and ask me to fan uh, uh, an intricate window or around stuff, and uh, you're gonna it, it'll be hilarious yeah. to watch. Thank so you. it's just it's 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 one of those things. It's a skill set that um, I think every glass repair technician and every glass restoration technician, which in my definition is everybody who cleans windows, right? Yeah. Um, it's a skill set that you need, and it's one that, uh, you know, whether you decide to go off and charge out and take on the restoration jobs, which I will tell you right now, in a post-COVID world, is an incredibly in-demand uh, service. Um, yes, thousand percent. COVID decimated the glass industry, okay? And what used to take 96 hours to get from a glass shop now can take six to eight weeks. So builders don't have opportunities, uh, property managers, like if they want to replace the glass because of graffiti or because of, you know, it's a door that got scratched from rings or whatever. Yeah. Um, the, the, the timelines are, are not there. The cost is through the roof and you being able to come in and differentiate yourself from all of the other professional window cleaners in your area. This is something that really just kind of puts an extra notch in your belt. Yeah, sets you aside for sure. Well, I appreciate you kind of being on, but if anybody doesn't know you, tell me again, how do we find you? Like, how do we get a hold of you? I got questions. I want to call you. I want to ask a super amazing uh, pro and OG in the industry. How do I do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. So again, Cody Thomas, I'm going to give you the best ways to get a hold of me. The first is email Cody at glassrenew.com. Okay. And if you're emailing me there, then feel free to check out the website, glassrenew.com. Um, our, our, our main line number here, and everyone who answers the phone here has 
gone out and made money and done this service. Nobody who works at Glass Renew that answers the phone is allowed to answer the phone until they've gone out into the field and actually done this. So everyone you're talking to is a content expert. Our 800 number is 888-769-0001. Um, and all of this is also at the bottom of this uh, the sheet that is gonna be linked below. So you can get a hold of us, a hold of us there. And what I, I, I just, my ethos, my personal ethos, okay, out there, the kind of the, the rules that I live by, I've got two of them. The first one is that the only stupid questions are the ones you don't ask. And I know that's super cliche, but seriously, the only stupid questions are the ones you don't ask. And the second one is the only problems I can't solve are the ones I don't know about. So it's, you know, if you've got a, 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 a challenging situation, if you're getting blamed for scratches that you didn't cause or you didn't know you caused, um, if you've got customers that are covered in scratches and you want to, you know, need help figuring out how do I approach them about this? How do I bid it? Whatever the question is, give us a call. We're here to help. And uh, there was a guy, uh, uh, I'm sure many of you guys out there know him. His name's Kirk Kempton. He runs a company called Responsibid. And uh, years ago, uh, I was at a roundtable event down in New Orleans, and uh, uh, Kurt said something that uh, resonated with me. He had a, a window cleaning company at the time, Five Star Window Cleaning, and he said, we're a customer service organization that just happens to clean windows. And when he said that, I, I was like, that is just, you know, it, it fundamentally shifted my thought. And the one thing I pride ourselves on, uh, pride myself on with Glass Renew is that we, we aim to provide top customer service, okay? So when you need help, give us a call. If you're looking to grow your business, give us a call. Um, and we'll talk through the different options. You know, maybe it makes sense, maybe it doesn't. But now at least you know that when that dark minute comes and the finger is being pointed at you and they're saying, you scratched my glass, give us a call. We're going to help you uh, through this problem and hopefully turn a headache into a profit. Yeah, there you go. I appreciate it. Like I said, this is a scary subject, I know, for a lot of people. But the more we know, the better we feel about it. Just the better, more comfortable we are. So um, I appreciate it. Uh, if you don't know, uh, shameless plug of the day, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. So if you need anything, please do let me put your orders in. Um, it doesn't cost you any extra. I would love to put your orders in and then you got somebody in your back pocket. So my number directs 862-312-2026. That's a sell. So text me, call me, whatever you'd like. And of course, if you haven't yet, go out and get the uh, subscription to the American Window Cleaner Magazine. See, he knows. Uh, it is a real magazine, paper magazine to your door every single month. Uh, subscription's only 69 bucks. Go to awcmag.com. And, of course, you get the sticker sheet, which everybody always asks about. Anyway, there you go. I appreciate it. This has been a long one, but I appreciate your time and knowledge. So either way, go out there. If you got scratches, don't be scared. But more importantly, be epic.